Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Intersect Tutorial Series. This is episode 2 and today we're going to go over the map editor as well as a few other things. Alright, so let's get to it. Okay, so um, to start off, one difference you'll notice is that I am using the Intersect uh, Beta 6, which it at the time of this video isn't available to the public but everything about it um, that we're going to be doing is pretty much the same to version 5. Alright so first off I've got my server open and I wanted to show that if you type help in the server console a list of things that you can do with the server pops up. So with that said I'm going to open up my client and log in. And you'll notice uh, right off the bat some differences. The UI is better and we have music. So I already made a character. I'm going to log in with them real quick. So this character does not have administrative access and if you get stuck somehow like that uh, if your first character that logs in doesn't become an administrator if you look on here there's a, um, something you can do there's power which sets the administrative access to your user and to give your character the max power what you'll want to type is power your character name and then power 2 and then you can see uh, there it'll tell you you know their power has been updated on the server and on the client and then from there you can do something uh, that's very useful you type insert and open up this little admin panel where you can uh, set various things of different users like sprites you know even their own access and as well as warp to them and uh, kick and ban and mute and all kinds of other things. Alright, so anyways, on to the map editor. Let's open up this, uh, the intersect editor and we'll just type in the character that we're using. Alright, so start off, this is the map editor. Um, if you click over here, we have a map grid. This is basically like a zoomed out shot of all your maps. So, oh, and if you double click on any of the maps, it'll take you to that map. So currently we don't have anything. We're going to go ahead and fill this in with grass. Oh, and uh, the graphics you're seeing here as well also come with beta 6. These are the official intersect graphics that we are going to be using. Anyway, so we filled in that with grass. Now we're going to save it. And if we go back to our client, we'll notice we now have grass. Alright. So, um, now say we want to put down, you know, this little rock pile or something. If you click on that and you go back to your pen tool, you'll notice that there's, you know, a black square around it. And the reason that is, is because we are currently, oh, I went back too far. We are currently on the ground layer. And the way the layers work is uh, basically each one stacks on top of each other. So if you have a ground on the ground layer, that's the very bottom layer, which is highlighted in blue right here. And you'll notice that the character is above that layer. So the ground is the very bottom and is below the character. Then we have a mask layer. With the mask, it is below, also below the character, but on top of the ground. So we can do things like this. You know, put these strange little dirt piles. And then if we save it and then go back to our map down here, you will see our character will also walk above that. 
Okay, let's get those away. Alright. Then we have our mask 2, which is the same thing as your mask, except it's on top of the mask layer. See how that works? Then you have fringe. What your fringe layer will do um, is it stacks on top of all these layers, but it's also above your character. So, for example, say we highlight the fringe layer and click on this little sand square. And we put them like this, you know, just to show what it'll do. Now we go down here, we walk up here, you'll notice our character is now behind the fringe layer. You've also got the fringe 2 layer, which does the exact same thing as fringe, except it is above the fringe layer. So, let's see here, we'll just go like this with the fringe, then we'll go to fringe 2, we'll select this color, this will go above that one. Yeah, and if we delete it, it's still there. The fringe layer one is still there, excuse me. Now, say, I don't know, we've got a really detailed map with a whole bunch of stuff on it, and we have various fringe layers, and we want to figure out, you know, what exactly is on what layer. If you um, right-click on your mouse above a layer, you can uh, actually disable that layer, uh, and you won't be able to see it. Just a useful little tip. Okay, so let's get all this stuff out of here. Okay. So, the next thing you'll notice is that, you know, you can select your tile set. And for some reason, all my tile sets, I, I think my database is messed up or something because it says I have, like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different versions of each tile set for some weird reason. But anyways, so we're on the ground there, which is good because I'm going to show you how to use auto tiles. Auto tiles can be very handy, but limiting as well in some cases. So what an auto tile does is you'll notice how um, these tiles right here are in a really specific pattern, right? So if we click on one and say we go to the mask 2 layer because we want this to appear over the ground but under our character, um, if you click and drag it'll automatically fill in uh, you know the tiles around you so it can be very useful but very limiting at times because once you put that down to put something on top of it you're gonna have to go to the next layer obviously and uh, sometimes I don't know I just feel like that limits you to an extent as how far your map design can go and um, we have various different um, auto tile options. So the first one is the auto tile VX format, which is what the intersect tiles will be in. And um, it's basically a 2 by 2 32 block uh, segment up top and two here and two here and it will create you know a path for you or however you would like to think of it. And then we have uh, fake, which I'm not entirely sure. I think this just makes one appear without uh, messing up your tiles. And then we have animated, which for an animated one, we're going to have to find a tile set with uh, animated tiles. Right here, probably water and lava. Okay, so we got these water tiles. Well, for a, an animated tile, you will need 
three sets, uh, one of each animation. So we have this style here, which is animation one, this style here, which is animation two, and this style here, which is animation three. And then we can put that on the map, and you'll see that it is animated. Now we have a cliff auto tile. Let's see if we can find you know a cliff tile set. Let's see. We got houses. This will work perfect. Houses are basically a, just a square, 32 by 32 block square right here. You click it and it will create your house for you. And uh, you can also do it with the roofs, and it works great. We're actually going to put that roof on the fringe layer. That way the character will show up behind it. And then you have the waterfall, which I'm not sure. Let's see, do we have a waterfall tile set? We do. Okay, so the waterfall tile set. The way it works is it'll cycle between these three animations. And let's see here, we'll put it on the fringe, and we're just going to go like this with it. And there we got our waterfall animation. And then you have auto tile for XP format and animated for XP format. And what that does is it takes up a 4x4, four four, or I'm sorry, a 3x4 square grid as you can see. And I don't think we have any uh, tiles in these graphics, so I'll fit that format. Alright, so the next thing we're going to want to go to, because if we hit save on our map, and then we go back to our client, you're going to notice that we can walk over this uh, waterfall, and we can walk over this house. The way we stop that is we go back to our editor. We go over here to attributes. Now in here we got a um, a lot of different uh, possibilities of things we can do. First, we're gonna stick to our block, and we're gonna block off all the little tile areas that we don't want our player to be able to walk on. We'll be able. To, we'll make it to where you want behind the waterfall. Why not? All right, we saved it. Now let's go back and see what we got. Okay, see. Now it's kind of starting to feel like, you know, how a game map should feel. Go check out this waterfall. Should be working. Can't even see it because of the UI, which is okay because. We can go over here to our options and make the screen resolution quite a bit bigger. And there we go. Or we could also hit F11 and hide the UI altogether. Alright, so back to the editor. So that's nice and all. Um, we'll cover all this other stuff at some point, maybe not in this video, but we will go through all of it in later videos. Then we got lights, which I'm not going to cover at the moment, events, which I'll go through later also, and NPCs, which I'll also go through later. So now we got this map, right? And in our editor, we can see we have this square little map, and everything else is black. Now, the way we fix that is you simply click on a surrounding map and it will create a new map and then you'll click yes now let's go back to our ground tiles and we're going to get our grass and we're going to fill this then we're going to hit save and save hmm. okay let's do this We'll get this dirt path go on our mask layer, and then we'll put it to auto tile VX format. 
down. Oh, dang it. Not what I meant to do. I'm not sure what's going on here. Okay. I see. I put it on the mask too layer. Like a dummy. Alright, so we get that, get our XP on the tile for my guild. Okay. So we're gonna make say a little pathway right here. But we want it to connect over here without it looking like it's broken up. Well if you double click over here, it'll ask if you want to save your map. Well hey yes. And then we'll if we go like this and just connect it, it'll automatically connect on the other map as well. Now say you wanted to see more of this map. If you hit the arrow keys on the keyboard, you can actually scroll over and see all of the map. You do the same with up and down and left, you know, and right, all, all the directions. So now let's go ahead and just fill in. Oh yeah, here's another thing to note. You cannot create maps diagonally. So we're going to go up here, go back to our ground, put this to normal, so we just get one tile, and we're going to fill the grass layer in. And then we're going to save. Go over here, and we're going to fill the grass layer in. And then we're going to save. Now, I'm going to go ahead and fill in these other three with grass, too, because the way that the engine loads maps is it will load it in a 9x9 nine nine grid. But if you notice, if we walk up here now, we have a fairly large open map. You know, lots of grass, and a black hole over there, and a dirt path with some water and all kinds of other exciting things going on. Okay, so say you see um, we're on this map, and we decide we want this water tile, but we don't want to hunt through all the tiles since we have to get that water tile. Well, that water tile is on the mask layer, so we're going to click on this mask layer, and then we're going to go to this little dropper tool. We're going to click on that. Oh dang it, okay. So we're going to click on that. We have to be on the same map, apparently. It'll take us to what we need and set everything automatically. So we'll click back up here. Now let's make some water. We're going to save that. And then we're going to connect all this just so, you know, it looks how it should. We're going to hit save. And then, as well as uh, the dropper, you also have an eraser tool. But you can always hit the um, right mouse button to delete things off your map. And you can also delete layers at a time as well. Then you also have these flip vertically and flip horizontally uh, map buttons, but I'm not entirely sure what those do. I believe what it does is it will flip half of your map to match one other half of your map. I'm not sure, but I think that's what it does. Another thing, let's get back to our ground and get this to normal. Say you have, I don't know, a patch of flowers or something that you want to just put out and you just want to make a big square of it. You can click the square tool right here and you can drag and fill in large areas. It's pretty useful. Just throw some flowers here. 
why not save that okay so that kind of shows you how to decorate your maps let's get into some more of the specifics of the map now if you go down here to map properties you can set things like your music and sound, the name, brightness, all kinds of other things. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find, I don't know, an interesting sounding, ooh, dark fantasy open, uh, looping. We'll go with that. And then we're going to hit save. Now we've got some music to go with our map. And it sounds interesting. You know, more lively. Now you can do other things like select fogs and the speed of fogs, which I guess we don't have any fogs uh, right now. If you set the name of the map, we're just going to name it test map. All right, and then you have a thing right here called zone type, which uh, you have normal, safe, and arena. Basically, normal means that you can attack um, um, enemies and players, or enemies, and I believe players maybe, I can't remember for sure on that one. And then you have safe, which means you can't attack anything, and then you have arena, which is for players, you know, PvP combat. We're just going to leave it to normal. Then down here you have your brightness and is indoors so if you make it your is indoors to true and then do something like say change your brightness to 25 you'll notice that it gets darker that's because we don't have a light source to light it up so let's go over here to our lights now if we click on a random area let's say we'll give this water a light source now, we can go here, select our color. We're going to give it this blue color. We're going to go OK. Now, the size of it, we're going to go ahead and, I don't know, we'll make it large, say 200. And then the expand amount, we'll go 20. looks pretty bright now. We're going to go save. So now we guys got us a light source. You can do other things like overlay graphics, panoramas, which panorama, for those of you who don't know, is just an image that appears in the background. Then you can do, you know, hue change, overlays, and even weather effects, which weather works off animations, which is a video I will do at a later time. If you go up here to map list, you'll notice that you have all of your maps listed out. We're going to go ahead and save this map. And I thought I renamed this map, but we'll do it again. Okay. So up here, you can order your maps chronologically you can select the current map that uh, you're on if you are working on a map and you want to know where it is in your map list and you hit this button it'll highlight the map that you're working on you can click this to create a new map and this will create a map that is not connected to any of the maps that are connected here so basically if you're um, doing a transition into like indoors or cave or something like that this would work really great then you can create a folder and within this folder you can put your maps which for some reason um, doesn't seem to want to create a new folder for me alright you can also rename your maps and even delete your maps now let's go back up here to our map grid. We'll notice that these are all green. If you hit this refresh button, you can do you can 
usually refresh it and that'll work or you can double click on the map and go to it and come back and then it'll be there alright um, another thing you can do is you can screenshot your whole map now this will pop up you can save it wherever you want and it'll usually say it take a little bit you can take a world screenshot with this stuff and this will also pop up and then you can take a screenshot of your whole world map that you have selected at this moment alright well that about covers it for the basics of the map editor um, in another video we will learn how to use NPCs to fill our maps and how to fight them and all kinds of other fun things. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know, leave a thumbs up and let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, and stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you. Bye.